Hey everyone, Bring the Gamer Girl here. Uh, welcome back to the Arcana a Mystic Romance. Um, yeah, we're, we're back doing this. Uh, we're getting right into it. We're part two, the High Priestess. Um, yeah, let's just, just get right into it. <laughs> uh, I've seen many strange things in my time as a magician's apprentice, but the events of this night were strangest yet. Seeking a moment's rest, I go upstairs to lie down and slip away lost in a dream. Okay. I'm still sick, by the way. <laughs> uh, the sky is no more than a slim green line along the endless horizon. Um, Azra sits beside me on the back of a strange beast. Master, where are we? Dark clouds bear- uh, mm. Dark clouds bear down all around the landscape, a shifting sea of rust-colored sand. Ahead is a road of perfect black stone. Far enough from home, I think. Far enough for what? For answers. For clarity. And I need them soon. A storm is coming. He looks out into the distance, his voice dimming in the uh, dimming to a wistful whisper. Whis wistful whisper. I strain to see where the path leads, but it keeps changing. Soon there will be a crossroads. How soon? Where do they lead? Depends which one you take. His hands reach for mine, but he stops just short. The sands, ri the sands rise around us on a chilly wind, blotting out the sky. For now, rest. I fall into a dreamless slumber. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> when I wake, the dawn light is filtering through the dusty windows. So, yeah, I'm playing this again. Um. I kind of like doing these mobile things. They're they're fun. They're easy to do. They're quick. Um. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I spent the early hours preparing my things. Preparing my things, casting wild shadows on the walls. I'm to meet the countess at the palace for some unknown purpose. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I throw on a traveling cloak and hurry outside, dragging the heavy door shut behind me. After last night's intrusion, I turn the first lock and then the second and third. Almost satisfied, I press my right hand to the door and whisper a cross me not spell. White worlds gl glow deep within the door, slowly fading into the grain. <laughs> I'm about to leave when the hair when the hair at the nape of my neck rises in alarm. Someone is right beside me, a dark shape looming in the alley. Oh shoot, okay. Uh, the form is certainly human, though enormous in size. Their flesh is scored with scars, clean and jagged, shallow and deep. Yeah, I'm, I'm just surprised. <laughs> Wait, uh, sh shrouded in a pall of weather barren furs, it's hard to make out a face. But they are definitely watching me. They stand between me and the road to the palace. Walk past. <laughs> I'm, I'm not dealing with this. I take a step forward, watching the figure cautiously. Stormy green eyes follow my movements as I enter the alley, but the stranger makes no move. A voice like distant thunder rumbles from beneath their robes. You are in grave danger. Hmm. <laughs> you are in grave danger. The earthy scent of mur- mur- okay. Watches over me and I stop in my tracks. He will return uninvited. He will offer you a gift when you need it most. Turn it away, or you will fall into his hand. Just like the rest of us. I blink, trying to process what I just heard. They are shuffling behind me, the dragging of rough, rough cloth and chains. And then silence. I look up and down the foggy alley. I left the shop and then... Wasn't someone else here just now? I shake off the fading thought. I don't have time to do dawdle. The countess is expecting me. Exhaling deeply, I continue toward the narrow, mo mossy steps to the marketplace. That was weird. That that guy looks scary. <laughs> it's early yet, and the marketplace is already wide awake. All around me are the sounds of sorry, ugh, kicking stuff around. All around me are the sounds of barding, laughter, vendors hawking their wares. The voice I know well calls out to me over the sea of noise. Bree, have you eaten? I've got that pumpkin loaf you, you like in the oven. Won't be long now. 
Come sit down and talk for a while. I sniff the air and my stomach twists in hunger. Then again, I should be careful of the time. Ugh. It's, it's gonna mess me up if I stay, isn't it? Uh, I'll stay. The baker's sun speckled face lights up with a broad smile. He leads me into the booth and a warm spicy scent surrounds me. As I settle against the back wall, he offers me a steam tin cup. And where's Azra sleeping in? I slip my I sip my hot minty drink. He's on a journey. Ah, and where's he off to this time? I shrug. The baker gives me an odd look. He didn't tell you? I look down into my cup, watching steam curl and twist as it rises. He was acting strange. The baker sighs, folding his arms over his chest. So, he's off on some mysterious journey. That's nothing new. But what of your mysterious journey, if I may ask? Shaken from my... Uh, shaken from my... Ugh, I can't speak. I blink up and I'm startled. Uh, there have been whispers all morning, you know. They say the Countess's escort rode into the neighborhood around dawn. He gives me a meaningful look, clearly clearly fishing for gossip, but I smile and shake my head, downing my drink. How's that bread coming along? Mysterious as ever, you and Astr Azra both. The baker goes to the small wood stove to check. There, all wrapped up for the road. I place a coin on the table and hand off my empty cup. Now, run along. Don't keep the countess waiting. I give a backwards wave and head back out into the flow of traffic. As I climb the well-worn steps, something catches my eye. A fortune teller's booth, tucked away in a shady corner. How nostalgic. Azra once operated out of a place just like it. As I'm lost in my musings, a patron emerges from the booth. Aw, oh, she's cute. Lucky numbers, check, groceries. I don't notice them backing into me until we crash into each other. Ugh! <laughs> the impact makes me stumble, te teetering on the edge of a step. It also upsets the basket balance on the trench. Stranger's hip, which sends dun with uh, which sends a dozen pomegranates rolling down the stairs. Oh, perfect! As if I wasn't already late. You're gonna help her, of course. I drop in. I drop into a crouch beside the stranger to help. I spot a pomegranate and is about as it's about to be stomped under a stray hoof and swipe it at the last second. When I hand it back to the stranger, their eyes sparkle with delight. Oh, thank you! How sweet of you to help. And after I bumped into you in the first place. Together we hunt down the rest of the pomegranates. They're a little, bru they're a little bruised, but no worse for wear. Jeez, I can't speak. Well, I can't thank you enough. They offer me a hand. The skin of their small palm is rough against mine, callous. Probably shouldn't do this, but... Rubbing it off on a sleeve, they offer me a fruit from the basket. When I accept it, the stranger gives me a smile that warms my chest. Take care, alright? I'll see you around. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, the stranger's eyes widen when they take a closer look at me. Wait, wait, wait. I know you. Um? I'm at a loss. I have no idea where they are. Who they are. Ugh. You're Bree the Magician. Countess... Countess Nadia said we were expecting you. Me? You can call me Portia. Port Portia? I'm gonna say Portia. I'm... I'm a lady's head servant. Oh, all the pieces click together. The palm grants were for the palace. And Portia's name rings a bell. I think I've heard of her through gossip in the market. Well, how lucky we are. Come on, I'll show you the quickest path to the palace. As the sun, as the sun journeys across the sky, Portia and I climb, the, climb stair after... Climb stair after seamless, seemingly infinite stair. I can't speak. Um... I don't even know. It's not even that late. What time is it anyway? It's... I don't even know. It's... it's like... It's going to 8 o'clock, that's it. <laughs> the higher we ascend, the fewer travelers we encounter along the way. By the time we reach the top, I can barely walk. Uh, the Portia seems as energetic as ever. She pauses to let me catch my breath. Bree, I'm glad you're here. The Countess could use good help. And you look like a good sort to me. She's so cute. <laughs> Is that like Disney Castle? Jeez. When we reach the palace, it's near dark. 
Before me is a towering gate of twisted iron. Beyond that, the palace rises in a swirl of glittering spires. Two guards stand on either side of the gate. Their eyes glint at me from behind their helmets. But they lower their weapons when they see Portia. These names, uh. Oh. This is Bree. <laughs> she'll be staying she'll be staying as our guest. Bree Ludovic Ludovico and Blood Milla. That's the best I'm gonna get. <laughs> the guards nod at me, their stiff pos posture relax. I can't speak what the hell? In unison they push open the heavy iron gate. After you. The gate slams shut behind me and it's and there's no turning back. You're trapped. <laughs> uh, Portia leads me across a long, steep bridge. Some kind of eel twists through swirling waters below, glowing like a bloodless ghost. Portia tugs on my arm, leading me away from the edge of the bridge. Come on, we don't want to keep Milady waiting. Milady. As we approach the intricate doors, anxiety starts to rise like bubbles coming to a boil within me. Is this wise? What awaits me in this fortress so far from home? Too soon, we are standing before the doors. Here we are. She swings her fist against the copper plate in three skull-rattling strikes. As the last echo fades, the pendulous door swings inward. We're already on part three. That was quick. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna continue from here. I'm, I'm interested. 